Okay. Now the second limitation which I told you uh, was that after you scale to a certain limit, okay, after you scale to 5000 nodes, you run a uh, vertical limit on name node and that is why you will need multiple name nodes. And that is one problem which we had in the Hadoop 1.0. So in Hadoop 2.0 what has happened is that we have created a federation of name nodes. Okay. Now this is a slightly confusing thing to understand at the outset but don't try to think too much just try to listen to what I am saying okay try to listen to uh, me and I am sure it will become clear. So instead of having just a single name node okay we introduced a, a active and a passive name node right. So that fo that forms one set of name nodes okay uh, vertical limit means that uh, you can only scale, you cannot scale uh, further because you cannot increase more RAM in that machine. Okay. So in this case, instead of having just one set of name nodes, now when, when I say one set, I mean one active, one passive and secondary name node. Okay. So that is one set. When I say I will start saying instead of using one name node, I'll start use, say, using the term instead of using one set of name nodes. Okay. One set of name nodes means one active name node, one passive name node, okay, and associated secondary name nodes. Okay, can I get a yes on this? Is this clear? What is one set of name nodes? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, instead of using one set of name nodes in Hadoop 2.0, we have introduced the uh, term called federation or a in the architecture we will introduce a federation where you can use multiple set of name nodes okay so this particular thing here which you see is one set of name nodes which has its own name node which has an active name node which has a sec uh, passive name node and a secondary name node again there is a another set of name node which has active passive as well as a secondary name node okay now all these name nodes actually interact with the common storage which have say now you have 10,000 data nodes okay now you let's assume that you have 10,000 data nodes okay now each name node can be accessing x number of data nodes okay but they will have their own namespaces there namespace signifies a metadata set okay so, say for example in the data in a single data node you have data from say US, you have data from India, you have data from UK. So all these could be, all this data could have and if there is hardly any interrelation between that data and a single processing, then what you may want to do is that you may want to store this data in separate namespaces and each namespace can be mapped to one name node. Okay. So what may happen is that okay you create a, a Visualize namespace as a directory structure. Okay, so on this you had one one set of uh, on this name node you you divided this name Now what was the challenge? The challenge was that if I have ten thousand data nodes, storing all the files file system structure in the metadata of my name node becomes a problem. Is that clear? That was the problem. That was the problem, right? So ten thousand data nodes have so much directory structure, so much metadata. Storing that in the name single name node RAM was a problem, right? Okay. So instead of creating separate clusters with 5,000, 5,000 nodes, what we did was we partitioned the data itself in the data nodes logically, okay, as namespaces. And one set of data node will use will take care of only that namespace. Say for example, this green and red signify different namespaces. So our friend on the name node one set will be looking at only the green part of it. So it will be storing the metadata of only the green part of this name node. Though we are in the same cluster, the name node set two will be looking at the red part of it on a different namespace. Similarly, this will be looking at a different part of it. Okay. Does that make sense? While each of these name nodes, each of this name node set has its own active name node, passive name node and a secondary name node. Okay. But they are looking, they are now in that 10,000 node cluster or a 20,000 node cluster. Say you have a 20,000 node cluster and you've created a federation of four sets of name nodes. And one set of cluster will be looking at 
only the marketing data which is kept in the marketing namespace. Other one is looking at only the sales data which is kept in the sales name node, uh, which is kept in the sales namespace. Similarly, you have data from say uh, some other finance which is kept in the namespace of finance which this name node set is taking care of. Okay. So every name node can look at any data node in a cluster but lo look at only its namespace. Now this name node can look at any data node. Right? It can use the power of parallel processing but can look at its own namespace. Is that clear? So instead of creating four clusters which would, we would have to create and associated uh, overheads we, have, we just can manage with one cluster by creating a federation of name nodes. Is the, does that make sense? So that means namespace is associated with some data, dedicated data nodes? No. A namespace, marketing, all the marketing data kept in all the data nodes belongs to the namespace marketing. Okay. So it can be kept in all the 10,000 nodes, but only that part of the data will be belonging to that namespace. It is not that I have divided it into, so uh, namespace 1 looks at only these 5,000 nodes, the namespace 2 looks at the remaining 5,000 nodes, namespace 3 looks at the remaining 5,000 nodes. That will be like creating separate clusters, right? What we have done is that all the data nodes are accessible, but the name node set 1 is concerned only with its own namespace. That is, which means that only the directories which pertain to this particular namespace will be usable by name node set 1. Okay, 10,000 cluster means 10,000 data nodes and you can manage with two name node sets with there. Okay, the challenge is not interacting with 10,000 machines. It is managing the metadata of those 10,000 machines. Right? Managing the metadata of those 10,000 machines. So if I divide that metadata logically, okay, into multiple namespaces and store the metadata which is relevant for me, then I can get a scenario in which I have actually clobbered all the multiple clusters together and still will be able to use the processing power of those 10,000 nodes together. Does that make sense? The metadata are information about where the data is stored, the directory structure, okay, metadata is the data about data. Okay, don't get into who decides this metadata and all. First, first answer that question, if I could have a scenario in which instead of having multiple clusters, in the same cluster itself, in each data node, if I could divide this into multiple namespaces, okay, and have one set of name nodes only store the metadata of those namespaces, then we get a scenario in which I can still use the processing power of the complete 10,000 node cluster and also not worry about the scale issues when we, and I don't hit the upper limit on the RAM of managing the name node as well, data metadata as well. Does that make sense? Also data node registered with name node set 1 will not used by name node set 2. Okay, so data nodes are not registered. It is the namespace inside the data node which is registered. It is the directory structure inside the name node which is registered. The complete processing power of the data node is available to all the name nodes. But they have access to only limited data in that. Okay? Is that clear? So it is not that I have data node 1, 200 will be registered with name node 1. Data node 2, 2 200 will be registered with name node 2. It is not like that. So basically the benefit of doing this is that the processing power of the data nodes is still available. Okay, all the data nodes are still available. But what you did was that on each data node, you specified that this area to this area will be associated with this name node one only. Okay, so every date name node will have the information of all the data nodes. Yes, every name node will be talking to all the data nodes, but not all the directories inside that data node. So let's assume that what you've done is you have say 10 terabyte of data in a single data node. You divide that 10 terabyte of data into four sections of 2.5 terabytes each. And the metadata regarding that 2.5 terabyte uh, is managed by one set of name nodes. Okay, that is what we are doing. So is this clear to everyone?
what is the benefit of doing that i'll explain you once just in a while let's assume this way you have 10 terabytes of data right in each name in each data node what you did was you divided that 10 terabyte into 2.54 sets of 2.5 terabytes okay and you let each name node set manage only that 2.5 terabytes so the metadata in each name node set will be only for the 2.5 terabyte of data which is there on the data node is that clear so we can actually inst instead of uh, say if if this name node was managing 100 could manage only 100 it can now manage actually 400 see the whole idea behind this is the challenge was in storing the metadata right so one solution was create another cluster but then we are not utilizing the processing power of the pool so what we do is we divide this complete cluster into namespaces okay where each namespace references only one set of data but can still man but can still use the complete uh, processing power of the complete data node now the solution could be create separate clusters okay and we just saw that if we create separate clusters we will end up using under utilizing the processing power of the cluster is that also clear to everyone can i get a yes from everyone very good okay then what i did was instead of creating separate clusters what i did was that i divided each the data which is stored in each data node into namespaces okay as separate blocks in uh, I mean, using the term block is not correct because block refers to something else. But you can uh, you can refer this as separate namespaces, and I will let each name node set each name node set manage one namespace. This namespace is created by the user, depending upon the business need. Okay, it is not created by the framework. It is created by the user. It will tell it will say, okay, this is the marketing namespace. I'll keep all my marketing data here. This is my finance namespace. I'll keep my all finance data here this is my uh, or it could be geographical as well whatever depending upon the business okay so is this clear to everyone now the benefit of doing that over creating a separate cluster is that though you can still manage with x set of name nodes and x set of data nodes you can still utilize the processing power of the complete cluster together so instead of creating multiple clusters i created in the same cluster i created independent name node sets which could access only x amount of data but could use the processing power of the complete pool well we can still run out of memory for each name node but we will create namespace keeping in view the fact that if i have a requirement for a 20000 node cluster i'll create four namespaces so that this guy can manage them okay and if we are running out of memory then we will probably create another namespace so the processing can still be shared but the memory or the uh, or or the part that which data i'll be processing is separate still so it's like having multiple clusters but still letting each cluster utilize the processing pool of the other clusters as well yes complete processing power means all the data nodes yes so see your data can be stored in all the data nodes right so if you instead of see it's like instead of you could have stored your data in five data nodes instead you stored your data in 10 data nodes so that you can do parallel 10 parallel map jobs can be run right so instead of storing your data in 5000 nodes now you can say move the same data in 10000 nodes and run 10000 map jobs in parallel to get the output faster right does that make sense guys so you have the power of a 6000 node cluster without the bottleneck of having just a 5000 node cluster right but now metadata of all data node in cluster should be kept in each name node no lija so not the complete not the complete metadata right only the metadata part remember that example of i dividing that 10 terabyte uh, uh, data node into 2.5 terabytes from each so only that the responsibility of this one will be only to store look at the metadata of that 2.5 okay yes now name node incurs less overhead of managing the metadata still you can uh, divide your distributed data over a larger cluster right so this name node itself can run the jobs 
on 10,000 machines or 20,000 machines, but jobs only related to this namespace, right? Which is usually what you'll be doing. Does that make sense? Okay. So basically, this is the pool of blocks. So these blocks, which are in this namespace, pool one is for this one. This pool one can be distributed, can be actually located in all the data nodes, but the pool for this one is the namespace which is related to this name node. That is all it means. Okay. Pool concept is clear. Pool refers to all the blocks which are related to this namespace, which is handled by this guy. So all those 2.5 terabytes of data from each data node contributes to pool one, which is being handled by name node set one. Would it be correct to say that the namespace requirement for 20k data nodes is divided up and distributed over four name node sets? Yes, that is correct. So let me summarize this in two sentences now once again. So you had a problem, business problem, where you had say, uh, say you let's assume, don't quote me on these numbers, you had 500 terabytes of data. Okay. You had a business requirement where you had a 500 terabytes of data and you you thought that this this 500 terabytes of data can be stored in 10,000 machines. Okay. Fine. Now, out of this 500 terabytes of data, 250 terabytes of data was for some application, 250 terabytes of data was for some other application. Okay. So, you could have created two separate clusters for that as well. Right. Without any loss in terms of because they are not anyways talking to each other, right? So you can create two separate clusters as well. But in case you required to run the jobs fast and you wanted to utilize 10,000 machines for that, then that was not possible. So with the concept of federation, what you do is you still run your 5,000, you keep your 500 terabytes of data in those 10,000 machines, okay? But in each machine of that, you distribute some data. So say, for example, if your uh, 250 terabytes of data was distributed in 5,000 machines earlier, now this 250 is distributed in 10,000 machines. Okay. And one name node set takes care of this 250 terabytes across various machines with the metadata and everything. And the other name node set takes care of the other uh, 250 uh, terabytes of data on the 10,000 nodes. When it comes to processing this data, since you have the pool, complete pool of, uh, you have the complete uh, 10,000 data nodes, you can run 10,000 jobs in parallel and get your output faster, right? So that's what it actually does. 